Last Sunday we talked about the message Jesus asked us to preach, which is the gospel of the kingdom of God. And he says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 7, he says, as you go, preach the gospel of the kingdom. Preach this gospel of the kingdom. Because he knew in the last day, people would teach things that suit them. Hallelujah. People will want to teach things that make them happy. Hundred ways to be rich and all those things. But Jesus asked us to teach about the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so today we want to look at the next thing. As a minister of the gospel, not only just a minister, but as a child of God. We must have the heart of Christ. The heart that Jesus has is the heart that is required. And it's very important because you see there are Christians that are so hard hearted like unbeliever. And you know the Pharisees and Sadducees of Jesus, they were religious leaders. They were teaching the laws. But their heart was so hardened that they had to kill the Son of God. And so it's possible to be a Christian and still have a wicked heart. And we want to look at the heart of Christ. This is necessary, especially for church leaders. Don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul speaking to the church, he said to the church in Philippians, he said, in Philippians chapter 2, he says, Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servants, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in as a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedience unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. He is telling you that let this mind which is in Christ Jesus also be in you. What was the mind that was in Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was humble. Even though he was God in the flesh, the Bible says he humbled himself. He became a servant. That means that as a minister of the gospel, we are called to be servant. And that servanthood is to be humble, is to be submitted. You see that is to be humble, is to serve. And because of his submission, the Father raised him up and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at his name, every knee in heaven and on earth will bow. Let this mind which is in Christ Jesus be in you. What mind was in Jesus Christ? He was a servant. He counted himself servant. So when you are called as a minister of the gospel, as a Christian, you call to submit yourself, to humble yourself. I remember as a, as a young minister, I began to do the work of God when I was still very young. And one certain time I went to meet one pastor. And I was speaking with him about the fact that we could do a certain meeting together. And he looked at me and he said, you are not my level. <laughs> he said, you are not my level. And I was like, wow. And he was still in that his level when God started taking me to nations. And now he is the one who is calling me to camp. And he even take off his shoes and gave them to me and said, the Lord said I should give you my shoes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the, cross, the dead on the cross. That means as a servant of God, one is to be humble and have a servanthood heart, a heart to serve people, 
It had to be there for people and to be obedient to God's word. If you are a servant of God and you don't obey the word of God, what good is there? What difference does it make? Glory be to God. And then we will see what Jesus himself says in John chapter 10. Jesus speaking about himself, he says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is hiring and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, see the wolves coming and leave the sheep and flee it, and the wolf catcheth them and scatter at the sheep. So he's saying that the person who is not the owner of the sheep runs away when he sees that the wolf is coming. And then he said the howling fled because he's, he's only been hired and carrying out for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. As the father knoweth me even so I know the father. And I laid out my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this folk. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore does my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I may take it again. Glory be to God. Jesus speaking about himself as a good shepherd, that he laid down his life for his sheep, that he wasn't afraid of giving his life for the sheep. He wasn't afraid to stand for his sheep. That those who were hired to do the job, when they see circumstances, they will run away. It's the same thing today. You see ministers quitting the ministry work when they say God has called them. And now God is called, telling them to quit the job. They run away because what? They were hired. And that's what it is. Because they were being paid salary, it means that they were hired. But when the sheep are yours, you don't live on salary. Glory be to God. You do the work with all your heart because you know they are your sheep. You know that you are serving your master, Jesus Christ, who is the head of all the shepherds. And he says the real shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. And Jesus demonstrated that. He laid down his life for us so that we who came to serve in his place might be a good example also to follow in his footsteps. That we might lay down his life. We might lay down our life for the sheep. What does that mean? That means that we care for the sheep. We think about the sheep, not just about us, not just about what we will get. Not just about what will make us happy, but we think about how we can love the sheep. The heart of Christ is the heart of love to the point that he could lay down his life for the sheep. And you know Jesus laid down his life for you and I. And if you're a minister of the gospel, and you know Jesus laid down your, his life for you, why is it difficult for you to take care of his sheep? Jesus wants you to clothe yourself with love. Regardless of what people have done. Regardless of what they have said to you. Regardless how you've been treated. Lay down your life. Do the work that God has given to you. Don't quit because of circumstances. Because the hiring man saw the wolf coming and he ran away. He ran and when you run, who will take care of the sheep? That's what pastors are doing. You leave the ministry who is going to take over. Yes, God will raise people, but come on. You are leaving a space without raising anyone. You see what Jesus did? He raised 12 disciples in three years. He poured himself into them and showed them the ways of a shepherd. 
And you know all his disciples except one that laid down their life for the sheep. Glory be to God. And so if you are a minister of the gospel, you must understand that the gospel is just more than preaching. It's just more than Sunday sermon. You have to take the church members as your children, as your spiritual children. Like Paul did, he prayed for them that they might be saved. They might know the Lord. Their eyes may be opened. Glory be to God. And this is what the Lord says about the false prophets, those who, who were in the days of Ezekiel. And the Lord spoke to Ezekiel about the shepherd. He says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thou sayest the Lord God unto the shepherd. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you fed not the flocks. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up the, that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they become meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Hallelujah. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search to seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely my flocks become a prey, and my flocks become meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flocks, but the shepherd fed themselves, and fed not my flocks. Therefore, O ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Thou said the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherd. And I will require my flocks at their hands, and cause them to cease from feeding the flocks. Neither shall the shepherd fed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flocks from their mouth, that there may not be meat for them any more. This was the word of the Lord to Ezekiel in the days where the shepherd is supposed to take care of the church member they weren't. Like in this coronavirus, church have closed down, people are scattered. Pastors, what are you doing? Are you doing follow-up? You need to do follow-up. You need to set up schedule of people to speak with them on the phone, on messengers. Call them, follow up. Don't just leave them. Don't just let them go and you feed yourself and you sit in that big chair that is rolling around with a big stomach and you feeding yourself. That's what they were doing. They were feeding themselves. And the Lord said he will require them from your hands. So as a good shepherd, we are to feed the flocks. We are to look for the lost. Glory be to God. Look at what Jesus did when he saw that the people were without a shepherd. He says, And Jesus went out about all cities and villages, teaches in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sicknesses and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they had fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So when Jesus came, the shepherds of Israel were not doing their job. He said they were like sheep without shepherd. And he was moved with compassion. The heart of Christ is the heart of compassion. He is the heart of love. This heart is a heart of love. The heart of Christ is a heart of compassion. Compassion is such that you feel 
how people feel. You are touched with their way of life. You are touched how they cannot be able to assess the qualities of life, the qualities of God's presence in God's word, that you do something to change it. The heart of Christ is a heart of compassion. We must have that heart. If you don't have it, you are not qualified to be a man of God. The heart of Christ is the heart of love. And if you represent Christ, you must have the heart of love. If you don't have it for the shepherd, for the sheep, you are not qualified to be the shepherd. You see what they did in Ezekiel, they feed themselves, they eat from the people. I remember when I started ministry, I was serving under a pastor. And this pastor, you know, he will give me opportunity to preach. And then he will tell me after preaching, collect money from people, raise money, tell people to show money. And I began to become uncomfortable doing that after preaching. Sometimes I told him, oh, I forgot to do that. And he will become very angry. And you know, when the big people, when rich people come to church, you know what he said? He said, these are big fish. He said, I'm looking for the big fish. <laughs> big fish. Oh, Lord. And I pray, I say, Lord, have mercy on him. Have mercy on him. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. He's calling those who are rich, who have money, big fish. So he's eating from them. And that's what they were doing in Ezekiel. They were feeding themselves and eating from the sheep. The heart of Christ is the heart of love, of compassion. To look for the lost, to care for the church members. The church members are your spiritual children. You must pray for them. You must travel in prayer for them that Christ be formed in them. But you see today, because in the Western world, the church, they pay you salary. So it's become a job. And so you don't really have connection with the church members because it's a job. You do your job, they pay you your money. But it's not like that. The ministry is a call. It's taking care of God's property. And you do it on his behalf. And he's going to reward you for that. And so not everyone who is preaching is a minister of God. They might preach the gospel. They might preach the word of God. What, what makes one a minister of the gospel? One, he must be humble. He must be a servant. He must be obedient to the word of God. He must be compassionate to people. I have, I have traveled a lot and I have met pastors that they don't even want to look at my face. They don't even want to talk. <laughs> they don't even want to, to hear from me. And they are pastors. And I'm like, how can you be a pastor? You have such a wicked heart. What do you preach to your people? What do you preach? The love of God? And you are so hard-hearted. Oh, he's a shame. The church is in a mess. We must go back to the heart of Christ. Hallelujah. Not everyone who does miracle is a man of God. Because this is what Jesus says. Jesus says on the last day, He said, Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, we have, have we not prophesied in the name, and in thy hand, in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk as iniquity. Hallelujah. He will tell them, I never knew you. That's what he says. On the last day, Jesus will say to those shepherds, I never knew you. They will say, we do miracle. You know, we preach and thousands came, millions came. He said, he will say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquities. You know what that means? They do it without love, without obedience to God's word. 
without submitting themselves first to God. They do it out of their own selfish ambitions. Because you see, as much as you want to serve God, you can pray and fast. He will give you the anointing. But it doesn't mean that at the end you're going to enter God's kingdom. <laughs> it's very tricky. And so we must check ourselves as ministers of the gospel. Paul says, after I have preached, I subject myself so I may not be a castaway. It's important. And you church members, pray for your church leader. Pray for pastor that they will have the heart of Christ. Because of lack of the heart of Christ among the shepherd. That's why we don't see the power of God. We don't experience the glory of God. Because the glory of God will not dwell in a wicked heart. In a stoning heart. You see that? But where you see the love of God. The presence of God will manifest in that place. The power of God will manifest in that place. Glory be to God. So the heart of Christ is the heart of love. A heart that submits. A heart that loves people. When he saw people, he was touched. Glory be to God. He was moved and he did something. The Bible says he healed the sick. He took care of their need. He met it. And there are pastors who will never help you. They will never give you. They only want to raise money from churches. But they will never give you money from their pocket. <laughs> selfish ministers of the gospel. God is love. But why are you so selfish? God is loving. Why are you so hard-hearted? Repent from your sins. And get back to the place of love which God has called every one of us. To be a minister of the gospel. You must walk in love. You must be clothed with love. You must have the mind of Christ. You must be willing to lay down your life for the ships. You must be willing to lay down your life for the ships. This is the mind of Christ. This is the heart of Christ. And Apostle Paul said, Let this mind which is in Christ Jesus be in you. That when you become a servant of God, you are no longer thinking of your own reputation. You are no longer living for yourself. You are living for your master, for your savior. Let his love become your love. Let his love fill you. Let his power fill you. When he's, because you see, the power of God is, is in the presence of the love of God. You see, if you do not have that heart to accumulate God's love into your life, you will be dry and the presence of God will not be made manifest. So when you discover the love of God, you think about people. Because the reason for the anointing of God in the preacher is not for ourselves, it's for the people. You see that? Even the gift of healing is not to heal ourselves, it's to heal the people, it's to do the work. And so it's very important. That our heart is full of love. And if you don't have it, you can pray today with me. And say, Heavenly Father, give me a heart of Christ. Give me a heart of love. I repent from the way I have lived. I repent that I didn't live as a servant of God. I want to live like your servant. I need your heart. And if you're a Christian also, who heart is so hard and your heart is so hard and you are not transformed. You need to pray this prayer. And say, Lord Jesus, please give me your heart. I want to follow you. I want to learn how to be like you. And he will give you his heart. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you laid down your life for us. Help us to follow you in truth and in spirit. So on the last day, you will not say to us, I don't know it. And as you study God's word and read and ask God to help you to follow his ways and to obey him. You see them and humble yourself, obey his word and become a servant full of compassion for the lost and for the needy. May his peace rest upon you and God Bless. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him 
should not perish but have eternal life. You are watching GSM TV.